Maxwell self-powered car shock racers worldwide. No fuel, no battery. The race that changed everything. It began as an exhibition event. The Africa Tech Motors How, a place where engineers and inventors showcase experimental designs. Among the roaring Teslas, hydrogen hypercars, and solar EVs, a modest silver prototype labeled Ceph S1, self-power drive, stood quietly in a corner. Racers ignored it at first. No engine? No battery pack? Then what's the point? They joked. But when the test began, the laughter stopped. The Ceph S1 rolled forward, silently, then accelerated. Within seconds, it hit 120 kilometers per hour, with no combustion, no charge, and no visible energy source. Every sensor in the racetrack's control room went into red alert. Energy output was registering, but energy input was zero. Spectators thought it was a trick, until the car just kept going, lap after lap, hour after hour, endurance that defied physics. The world reacts. Within hours, videos of the event went viral. Racing legends, engineers, and scientists flooded the Internet with theories. Magnetic propulsion. Hidden energy recovery systems. Quantum trickery. But Maxwell Chikambutso, calm and focused as ever, simply said, It's not magic. It's just a different understanding of power. The U.S., China, and Germany immediately took notice. Motorsport analysts called it the Tesla moment of Africa. Formula E representatives reportedly reached out, asking for a private demonstration. Meanwhile, automotive companies quietly sent representatives to Harare, eager to learn how a nation once overlooked in global tech conversations had just produced something that could end the EV race entirely. The secret under the hood. When engineers examined the S1, what they found was astonishing. No lithium-ion cells. No alternator. No traditional regenerative system. Instead, a compact metallic unit labeled Self-Sustaining Power Converter MK.7. Rumors suggest it captures and converts ambient electromagnetic energy, vibrations and radio frequencies in the air, into usable power. Essentially, it feeds itself. While most cars need to refuel, recharge, or rest, the S1 simply keeps moving forever. It's the kind of idea that challenges physics, energy dependency, and even geopolitics. Racers respond. Professional drivers from across the world lined up to test it. Some called it a hoax until they sat behind the wheel. It accelerates like a dream, said one Italian racer. There's no noise, no delay, no weight shift. It's pure, endless motion. Racing circuits that usually echoed with roaring engines now fell silent, save the soften of this self-powered car slicing through the air like a whisper. One British racer even confessed, if this tech goes mainstream, it's the end of combustion, period. A new era for automotive freedom. Maxwell didn't just build a car, he built a statement. A future where energy independence is not a luxury, but a right. Where cars are no longer chained to fuel stations, power grids, or political control. And for the first time, Africa isn't following the innovation curve. It's leading it. The corporate backlash. Within days of the global broadcast, phone lines in Detroit, Berlin, and Tokyo lit up. Executives from the world's top automotive and oil companies were in emergency meetings. Not to discuss competition, but survival. If Maxwell's car truly required no fuel, no battery, and no charge, then trillion-dollar industries, gas, lithium mining, grid utilities, were suddenly staring down extinction. Emails leaked from a major oil corporation showed panic-level subject lines. Urgent. African tech threatens global energy model. Action needed. Control narrative immediately. In a matter of hours, disinformation campaigns began circulating online calling Maxwell's invention a scam, a hoax, and scientifically impossible. But that only fueled the curiosity, because the people had seen it. The car moved, and once the truth is in motion, it doesn't stop. The scientists step in. Several respected engineers from universities in South Africa and Singapore requested access to the prototype. After initial skepticism, their findings were shocking. The readings don't make sense, yet they're consistent. Energy conservation is not violated. It's just redirected. The data suggests that the car drew power from electromagnetic resonance in the surrounding environment, turning the planet itself into a power source. 
A Stanford physics professor privately admitted if this technology is real, and it seems to be, it's not just a car revolution. It's a civilizational reset. The secret meeting. A week later, an unmarked private jet landed quietly at Robert Gabriel Mugabe International Airport in Harare. Inside were three people, representatives from the U.S. Department of Energy, a major German automaker, and a tech investment fund from Dubai. They didn't come for a photo op. They came to negotiate. Sources close to the meeting claimed the offer placed on the table was $450 million in exchange for Maxwell's full patent rights and global exclusivity. But Maxwell's response was as shocking as his invention. I didn't build this for control. I built it for freedom. He walked away. That decision sent shockwaves to the corridors of power. Because this wasn't just an inventor. This was a man turning down generational wealth to protect an idea that could liberate billions. The global ripple effect. As news spread, innovators across Africa started building their own versions, inspired by Maxwell's courage. From Nigeria to Kenya, small engineering teams began experimenting with self-sustaining magnetic converters and wireless power loops. A new movement was born. Power belongs to the people. Meanwhile, Maxwell's prototype, the Set S1, began its world tour. At every stop, from Dubai Expo to Johannesburg Tech Summit, it ran flawlessly. No fuel lines, no plug-ins, no wires. Crowds would gather, expecting a stall or breakdown, but it never came. Each time it ran, the disbelief faded, replaced by awe. And behind the cameras, something bigger was forming. A silent alliance of nations ready to back this African innovation and dethrone the old energy empires. The leak that shook the world. It started with a single encrypted email sent anonymously to a group of investigative journalists. The subject line simply read, Project Blackout, Maxwell Containment Strategy. Inside were hundreds of internal documents from several multinational corporations, energy giants, automakers, and even government agencies. They revealed detailed plans to suppress, discredit, or outright buy and show Maxwell's technology. One line stood out more than any other. The deployment of self-powered vehicles poses an existential threat to global fuel-based revenue streams. Containment is not optional. It is survival. Within hours, the files went viral. The world watched in disbelief as the truth unfolded. The same corporations claiming Maxwell's invention was impossible were secretly trying to own it. The people fight back. The revelations ignited mass protests across Africa, Europe, and parts of Asia. In Harare, crowds filled the streets holding signs that read, Power to the people. Let Maxwell's car run free. No more energy slavery. Social media erupted. Influencers, scientists, and activists all demanded transparency. The hashtag, hashtag, let it run trended for days, becoming the biggest tech movement since the invention of the Internet itself. In the middle of the chaos, Maxwell appeared on live broadcast, calm as ever, standing beside his self-powered car. You can't suppress the truth forever, he said. You can delay it. You can discredit it. But the future always finds a way forward. The audience roared. And for the first time, the world began to see this not just as a scientific discovery, but as a symbol of African resilience and genius. The test of truth. To silence his critics once and for all, Maxwell announced a global live stream challenge. A 72-hour endurance test across rough African terrain. From Bulawayo to Cape Town. Under full satellite monitoring and no external power support. If the car completed the journey, it would prove beyond question that self-powered motion was not science fiction. It was African reality. The world tuned in. Millions watched live feeds from drones and tracking sensors. Hour after hour, the Set S1 continued. Across deserts, mountains, and highways, its dashboard glowing with constant power output. By the time it reached Cape Town, the impossible had become undeniable. The car had covered over 1,600 kilometers without a single recharge. The crowd erupted. Cameras flashed. Scientists who once doubted it stood in stunned silence. It was official. The age of dependency was over. The aftershock. Within weeks, major automakers announced emergency R&D projects to explore wireless resonance propulsion, the same principle behind Maxwell's technology. 
Stock prices for oil corporations plummeted overnight, while new African startups surged in global value. And Maxwell? He refused every corporate deal and instead launched the Seth Innovation Network, an open-source initiative allowing young African engineers to learn, build, and replicate his inventions freely. He said, Innovation belongs to those who believe. Africa's time isn't coming. It's already here. The message spread like wildfire. From small workshops in Ghana to tech hubs in Nairobi, young inventors began developing self-sustaining drones, water purifiers, and energy grids, all inspired by one man who refused to sell out. The final war for energy freedom. The success of Maxwell's self-powered car sent shockwaves through every corner of the industrial world. Oil corporations saw their shares collapse. Auto manufacturers panicked as orders for electric and hybrid cars plummeted overnight. And quietly, behind the scenes, a new kind of war began. The war for control of infinite energy. In Geneva, a high-level international meeting took place. Unannounced, untelevised, and off the record, representatives from the U.S., China, the EU, and major tech companies gathered to discuss one name, Maxwell Chikambutso. Leaked notes from that meeting revealed a single objective, acquire, patent, or neutralize the technology before it disrupts the global energy economy. But Maxwell wasn't there to negotiate. He was already two steps ahead. The unthinkable move, when offered billions a hand over his blueprints, Maxwell did something no one expected. He uploaded the entire schematics of his self-powered energy system online, free for the world to see. Every circuit, every component, Every mathematical formula behind the self-sustaining resonance drive made public. In one move, he destroyed any chance of monopoly or suppression. Governments couldn't ban it. Corporations couldn't buy it. It now belonged to humanity. That single act earned him both enemies and immortality. The legacy, years later, historians would call it the Maxwell Shift, the moment humanity began moving away from extractive energy to living energy. A new era was born, one powered not by fuel, not by batteries, but by the very forces of nature itself. In the end, Maxwell didn't just invent a car. He freed the idea of energy from the grip of those who sought to control it. His story became a symbol of what Africa represents at its core, limitless creativity, resilience, and power. And as the camera pans across a glowing African skyline, Cities lit by clean, self-sustaining energy, one voice echoes in the distance. When they said it couldn't be done, we showed them it already was.